an estate for the sorrow of the world. Estate. Now she is giving a very great qualification to him, calling an estate. One who enjoys beauty, fine details, you enjoy connoisseur, food. You don't just eat food, you enjoy the taste of each and every item. Then you give an estate. So he is in fact now an estate of sorrow. He is enjoying fine, fine, fine details of sorrow, sorrow of the world. Champion of a harsh and sad philosophy. So that is what he is affording, sad philosophy. That is what he is affording. Thou hast used words to shut her out the light. You want the word, I mean you don't want light to enter it all. You have put a screen there and call in truth to vindicate a lie. See? Well, that is what a devil will do. He will always use everything for his purposes. See? And call in truth to vindicate a lie. A lying reality is falsehood's crown and a perverted truth, her richest gem. Perverted truth is the richest gem of falsehood, of reality, a lying reality. Now that her, a lying reality, her stands for reality. And a perverted truth, her, it's just a gem. Does it correspond like that? Her, <laughs> O death, thou speakest truth, but truth that slays. Obviously, you are speaking correctly everything, but for what purpose, in what manner? To lay the march of life into the original innan. To lead a march of life into original in then. It is for that purpose you are speaking truth. And perverted truth, her riches, gem, sorry. I answer to, sorry, not truth, but truth that slays. So his argument, so to say, is to take the creation back into the Indian, to slay, to destroy, the, to nullify the existence totally, you see. And therefore, Savitri, I answer to thee with the truth that saves. I will not allow this march of life to end into the inane. I will take it to the divine. I will not allow that thing to happen at all. O oh, death, thou speakest truth, but truth does live. So you can say he is the denier and she is the one who is speaking of the affirmative spirituality, the positive aspect of it, the things which will lead to the divine manifestation, the contrast. So that is the debate between these two. One dragging to the original in name, one trying to bring back to the powers of the spirit. That is the debate. That is the tussle. I answer to thee with the truth that slays. A traveler, new discovering himself, one made of, now she is giving the first lesson in life divine to death. <laughs> Her first lesson in life divine begins. See, he was talking of how the creation, I curved the vacant ether and dot out space, this, 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 this. Sorry, 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 it is not that. What has happened? This is what I'm going to describe to you now. A traveler, new discovering himself, one made of matter's world, his starting point. Traveler, who is this traveler? 
Who? The soul, the spirit. No. No, no. He the original creator. The Supreme. He has become the traveler. And he has decided to accept matter as a starting point. New, he wants to discover himself anew. If I go through matter, how will I look like? I want to find out. <laughs> if I create a new world here, how I will look into that world? I want to see that. And therefore, I accept this possibility of the void of ignorance of matter and all that. So that I can see myself differently than what I am now. In a way, I am living in my supreme state. I am very happy, very blissful and all that, etc, etc. But let me see if I can find some other kind of a happiness. I am sort of tired of this happiness for a change, for a new taste. Let me see if I can find out some other way. And therefore, he starts discovering something new, new discovering. What is the new discovery? Let me first get out of my existence totally and emerge again to see myself differently. I am here, I am totally absorbing myself into myself. So I am nothing now. I have absorbed myself into myself. Now out of that total absorption of myself into myself, let me see if a new creation can come up, how it will look like. So he has become in that sense a traveler now to do all that things. A traveler, new discovering himself, one made of matter's world, his starting point. So matter is not the starting point. It is somebody who has made matter a starting point. He made of nothingness his living room. The void he has created for the, I had totally absorbed myself into myself. So there is nothing of me. I am totally now unaware of myself. When I am absorbed, I have totally become unaware. I have become inconscient, I have become ignorant, whatever you want to call it, you see. Because I have no faculty of now recognizing anything. I have absorbed myself totally, you see. One made of matter's world, his starting point. He made of nothingness, his living room. So that is how he has created nothingness. By the power of total self-absorption. When every faculty, every power, every instinct, every potential is withdrawn, what do you have got? Nothing. The void. He made of nothing his living room and night a process of the eternal light and death a spur towards immortality. So you are there now taking me to my immortality. You are serving a purpose of leading me towards immortality. In the transitional phase or whatever you want to call it, you have a functional role to play and that role is to take me towards immortality, my own immortality. In other words, what Savitri is telling, which was not spelled out by death, she is talking now of the involution. This is nothing but involution. A traveler has absorbed himself and made nothingness his starting point. Up there here, he has plunged into himself. Made of nothingness his living room and night a process of the eternal life. So there is a purpose, there is a function in having this night, in having this death, etc. etc. God wrapped his head from sight 
in Matter's cow. So he has put a hood on his own head and covered himself. I don't want to see myself, you see. <laughs> Matter's cow. Wrapped his head in Matter's cow. So this is, this is the, the Savitri way of giving you the process of involution. In Life Divine, you have 10 pages describing <laughs> how involution takes place. You see. God wrapped his head from sight. Whose sight? His own. His own sight. I close myself. I totally absorb myself. In matters count. His consciousness dived into inconscient depth. This is the plain statement of involution. The supreme plunged into the void and created inconscience. Unawareness, inconscience, unawareness of his own. All knowledge seemed a huge dark nation. So again he says, seemed. Because there is a purpose, he has put on this matter scowl, he has dived into depth, he has for a purpose, you see. Therefore, it seemed, all knowledge seemed a huge dark nation, infinity, wore a boundless zero's form. Boundless zero's form. Obviously, it is infinity himself who has become zero. Therefore, it has no bounds. It is also infinite. Infinity, whoa, a boundless zero form. Now, this boundless zero, in the light divine, you have got the phrase, the boundless finite. Boundless finite. In the right boundless finite. Finite. Yeah. Now this boundless finite that itself is a phrase from Einstein. <laughs> yeah. He calls this universe a boundless finite. It has no bounds at all, yet it is finite. The curvature of space and time is such that it is bound, it is finite, but <laughs> but there is no boundary, so to say there. So that, that phrase Shevindu has uh, uh, picked up from Einstein, boundless finite, and that he has transcribed here into Savitri as boundless zero. Infinity wore a boundless zero's form. You see, I mean, the, it's like, like, like a balloon. You are living on the surface of a balloon. That's the general uh, analogy which is given. You imagine a balloon and there's an ant sitting on the surface of the balloon. And wherever it goes, it always stays on the surface of the balloon. It cannot go out of the balloon at all. Yet, it is infinite. it is finite in that sense, but it is boundless. It is it is infinite in the sense that it can go anywhere and still it does not get exhausted. It always. So the zero, it's not finite. Hmm? Yes. The zero is it's finite. No. Well, I mean, the, the, uh, in the technical sense, no. In which sense? Wore a boundless zero. Zero means nothing. Yeah, nothing. Yeah. nothing so nothing. void has the void here is such that it has no boundaries. There is no boundaries. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So therefore, it is boundless. How can the, the nothing have boundaries? <laughs> See, that, that, that's a, that's the analogy I was giving you to a balloon. 
No, what it means is that no, no. Oh, what it means that uh, the zero is confined to itself. Zero is confined to itself, but that zero itself is infinite. Therefore, it is boundless, yet zero. So, what is the problem then? Zero is, yeah, I mean, zero, zero is, uh, uh, yeah, boundless finite, when you are talking of boundless finite, at the phrase, I was equating that phrase of finite with zero. The Einsteinian phrase is, we are living in a boundless finite universe. From the quantum physics. We know the finite. And one time he discovered that this finite is boundless. Yeah, this is the, the, the this is the this is the analogy, this is the analogy this is the analogy I was giving you of a balloon. You are sitting on the surface of a balloon, it is finite, yet it is infinite. It has no bounds. No, for me the balloon has a bound. Yeah, but <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's true. See, I mean, we, we are living in a universe like that. We are living on the surface of a balloon and uh, 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 we cannot escape it. Therefore, it is finite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that is why, that is how they expand. They expand. They expand the universe. The expanding universe is what the balloon is blown up and growing, 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 growing. Now what is happening? This ant and this ant, they are seeing that they are separating from each other, but they are still on the same finite world. All knowledge seemed a huge dark mission, infinity for a boundless zero's form. So Savitri has already read Einstein's theory of relativity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <See>. <laughs>